Hey and welcome back to Dan the Flavor Guy. Today is a little bit chaotic. We're making a dish. It's a diabetic dish. It's also a dessert. We got some noise in the background. I apologize for that. We're wrapping last minute Christmas presents. My beautiful wife and assistant is gonna help me out today with this dish. So without further ado, this is Siska. Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi guys, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to all. And thank you for having me on. Oh, we're yeah. super excited to do something that's diabetic friendly. Um, we want to have a little bit more to our family dinner, so we're super excited about that. A different dessert, something I can at least enjoy myself, so I'm excited to do that. So I'm ready. Let's get started. All right. So what are we starting with first? Are we starting with the, the wet side, or are we going to start with the dry? We are going to start with the wet. All right. All right. So we're super excited. We're going to have this dish. It's going to be from the Taste of Home. It's going to be gingerbread meringue bars. So we're really hoping that it tastes well. Right, I'm sure it will. Most of the stuff we've done on this channel has always tasted good. All right, so we're gonna start with one whole egg. Easy peasy. So we're gonna start with the butter and the molasses and we're gonna go ahead and beat those two together. All right, so we add... One cup of molasses. Mm -hmm. Man, that smells strong. Molasses makes everything taste better. I love molasses. All right. Once it's combined, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the two eggs. Yolks, just the yolks. And then we're gonna go ahead and crack an egg and add it to it as well. Now we are going to add the vanilla. Just beat it all in there, get it all well combined. Okay, perfect. So Francisco went to get the next ingredient and we'll be right back. All right, Siska took off so fast that we forgot to add one ingredient to the mixture because we want to mix all the wet stuff together and then we're going to mix all the dry stuff together and then combine them at the end. So what we forgot to do while we were whipping this up was to grab the, the pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now while she's getting ready, getting the dry mixtures ready and grabbing a bigger bowl because this is all not going to fit in this little one. Let's see, we missed the pumpkin. I'm sorry, but that's the reason why you're doing the flavor guy. Oh, yeah. all right. So now that she brought us the bigger bowl, we're going to go ahead. We're going to mix in all of our dry ingredients. We're going to start with the one and a half cups of the whole wheat flour. So with the correct measurements, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna put that in the description below because I don't remember all the exact measurements, but I do know what we're mixing in. So here we go. We got- Ginger. Ginger. Salt. So here I mixed the baking soda and the baking powder. I did one uh, teaspoon of each. One teaspoon of each. Mm -hmm. okay. And that'll be in the description below, so you guys will be able to follow along with us while you're doing that. Allspice. That is allspice. There's three quarters teaspoon. And ground cinnamon, correct? Ground cinnamon. All right, so I'll let Francisco whip that up and I'll get this stuff out of our way. Oh, that smells good. Uh, Mixed together. Since the holidays came around, it seems like a lot more recipes have been calling for allspice. Usually that's something that I don't keep, or we don't keep as um, normal ingredients to a lot of the stuff we make. So we had to pick some of that up and it's, I've never used it before and I, it's an amazing smell. I wouldn't, I mean, it says allspice, but in reality it smells super sweet. So I like it a lot. I might actually start using it in some of the rubs that I make. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be very tasty. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna to need to add this mixture into this and combine it all together before we put it in our pan to get ready to bake. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll let Siska continue to mix it and I'll pour it. So we'll switch sides. 
side. And this only bakes for 30 minutes. That's pretty quick. So it's going to be perfect timing for us to make it to the Christmas Eve party. Get these all mixed in. Get that wet and dry mixed together. And then all we have left is three more ingredients, which is some semi-sweet chocolate chips, which I found at Fred Meyer's. They're actually sugar-free, and they taste just like the regular semi-sweet chocolate chips you would get uh, what, by Nestle Toll House. Yeah. Then we have some crushed pecans, or these are actually just sliced pecans, whichever you would prefer. Some people like the smaller pieces. These ones kind of are a little bit bigger, so that way you can sprinkle them on top, do whatever, and kind of make a, a masterpiece out of your dessert. Oh wow, that looks good. It's looking really good. It's really coming together. The mixture is mixed really well. Um, I'm super excited, you guys, just because um, it's been a year now that I've been following following a diabetic diet, and so um, I really miss my sweets. And so being able to find a dessert that I can enjoy, I'm really excited about. Especially that's so aromatic. I mean, it smells delicious, and we haven't even cooked it yet. So I can only imagine what it's going to smell like when we start cooking this. Absolutely. So we're ready to put this in a baking pan and get this in the oven. All right, so we're gonna grab that, we'll be right back. And we're back! So we got our nine by 13 pan. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grease that with just your regular old cooking spray. Whatever you have, if you'd rather use butter, it's okay. We just need to make sure that we got a nice uh, surface that splits apart so we can get it scooped out of there when it's all done. Perfect. Now, we did notice as we cracked open our mini marshmallows that there's kind of a funky smell coming out of them. Yeah. We don't know why, it is the way it is, but hey, we checked the dates and everything was good. So I went ahead and I got my scale, my food scale. Um, if you don't have one, you might have to go get yourself some new marshmallows if they smell funny. So we're going ahead and we're just going to go one cup of the mini marshmallows that the recipe asked for, and we're at 2.5 grams. So all I'm going to do is dump this out and we're just going to start piling the big ones in. And then at that point, we might just cut them up or we just might leave them on top to see how they melt. We'll figure that out in just one second. I mean, who doesn't love marshmallows? <laughs> right. Makes everything taste great. I still can't wait till you figure out the drink, how to do the marshmallow on the rim. Oh. That's super exciting. I have an idea. I was going to make like a, called a campfire cocktail with marshmallows and bourbon and some cinnamon. I think it'll turn out good. But what I was thinking about was flaming, like burning the marshmallow, like toasting it above the drink. So we'll see. A lot of things we can play with. That's the beauty of food making your own out of every out of anything okay so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pour this in to the mixture first and then it goes to the marshmallows and I'll actually count out to give you an idea these are just regular sized marshmallows that you get nothing fancy can we grab a spatula, a spatula. yeah it's great job. Actually, you want to yeah let's scrape that off it's all it is it's almost like a cake like it the really consistency is of a cake. or almost like a brownie too yeah. brownie cake Brownie be in that color, I can see. There, no good. Thank you. Okay. And at least being thick, we'll be able to spread it pretty well in the bottom of the pan. So as she said before, marshmallows are gonna go on first, so I think once she gets this set up, we'll kind of set a couple on there to kind of see. I think the reason why, well, I know the reason why they want to use the mini marshmallows is because we're kind of, we're trying to build layers. So we're building layers of flavor. You said, Okay. Marshmallows, pecans, and chocolate chips is what you said, right? Marshmallows, pecans, chocolate chips. And we just did figure out, because we went back and we referenced that recipe, it says to sprinkle with the marshmallows. So we definitely have to figure out a way to get these smaller. You can either tear them. I have uh, scissors specifically for cooking, so that way we don't get kids' germs on it because our kids get into everything. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to grab those real quick, and we'll be right back. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to cut these up into what I think would be the size of mini marshmallows. Not like that though. <laughs> yeah, that'll be better. So if you ever find that you um, don't have mini marshmallows, I recommend that you just go to the store and go get yourself some mini marshmallows because 
This is a pain. This is not the best, but we had to improvise because we have a deadline and we have a party to go to here soon. So after cutting these up, we're definitely not happy with the amount of marshmallows that are on there. It's not gonna give us an even layer like we thought it would. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab some more marshmallows. And hey, with any recipe, you can tweak it. You can make it yours and not somebody else's just by what we're getting ready to do. Add more marshmallows. We might even add more chocolate chips and less pecans because, you know, the texture. So let's see what we're gonna end up with. We're gonna go ahead and grab- Maybe we're gonna do some bigger chunks too. Why not have some fun with it? Right. So we ended up so far doubling the amount of marshmallows that the recipe. Just a little trick, guys. So I noticed they were sticking on Dan's hands a lot. So I wet my hands up a little bit and I'm able to get the marshmallows off my hands quicker. Oh, good tip. I would have never thought of that. Yeah. So the next thing we're going with is the pecans. All right. So I'll have, I'm gonna go ahead and pour them into her hand. I'll let her sprinkle it out. That way she can put however much she wants on here. That and the cool thing with um, pecans or almonds or peanuts, whatever it may be. I think I might like the whole thing. All right, you want the whole thing? All right, we're going with the whole thing. Each layer we're putting on here has a different texture. Um, the molasses and the, and the wheat flour and all that that we mix together has more of a soft texture. Once you start cooking a marshmallow, depending, I mean, if you've ever been camping, you would know that the longer you cook a marshmallow, the crispier it gets. So that's gonna add another layer of flavor. And then on top of that, you have the pecans another layer of flavor. And then, as everybody knows, chocolate melts in your mouth and you know what chocolate tastes like when it melts in your mouth, there's your another layer. So it's cool as you can add flavor, add flavor and layers. So we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle this over the top of everything else. Try and, try and get it to where it's all even so you don't have this one big spot. That looks good. That it does. All right, so what do you think? You think we got enough chocolate chips? It looks I, pretty even. I, it looks really even. I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna melt in once it gets in the oven for 20 minutes. And while we're doing that, we're gonna work on making the meringue to go on top of it. All right, we're gonna throw this in the oven. All right, so now that we have that in the oven, that's the base. Now we're gonna whip up some meringue, I believe is what it's called, for it. So we're gonna have to whip up some eggs. We're gonna start adding the sugar and Let's get busy. So, throwing in our egg, our egg whites. Four egg whites here. I accidentally got a little bit of yolk, but I don't think it's gonna hurt it. So, we're gonna kick this into medium. Um, whatever yours is, whatever your settings is for medium, go ahead and use that. All right, so we got the eggs in. I'm gonna go ahead and start whipping it, and then we're gonna start adding the sugar, um, little bit by little bit. Okay. So the buzzer just went off for the oven. We're gonna go ahead and pull it out. Siska has been sitting here beating this for probably the last 20, 25 minutes. Um, where I made a mistake is we should have whipped the eggs until they started becoming white and foamy and then add the sugar to it. Cause if you don't, you'll end up doubling the time on how long it takes to whip the eggs to get them into this creamy texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that while she- Got muscles now. <laughs> that looks delicious. All right. So now you gotta get a sneak peek. It actually turned out really good. It almost to me looks like a brownie with marshmallows on top. Almost. All right, so. So that's gonna go on the top and it's gonna go back in the oven for about nine to 11 minutes till it's like got a toasty brown uh, cover. Make sure we get all of it or as much as we can out of the bowl. And we're just gonna go ahead and take the spatula, just kind of smooth it over the top, make sure it kind of gets everywhere so we can add another layer, layer of flavor. And since it's the holiday season, we've been making multiple things. And so um, we decided to let our kids do something fun and do like a s'more brownie kit. So they definitely, while Dan's putting that in the oven, I'll go ahead and grab this kit and show you guys what our kids did. It actually turned out amazing. Um, 
don't know what it's going to taste like until later this evening but they were super excited to make it and it was very quick and easy so it's something that any of your kids can jump in and do we bought it at winco um, i'm sure you can find it at um, walmart or a grocer near you so i'll go ahead and grab that all right so here's the s'mores brownie kit Ooh. probably hard to see i'll go ahead and take i'll add some pictures uh s'mores brownie kit it's made by duck and hines it says this epic and fudgy it definitely looks amazing on the box not only that but it does look great in the pan so i think it's cool how on the box they went and they cut it and then stacked it up made it look like brownies but this does, i mean it looks delicious so it'll be definitely something to taste um there again this has got multiple layers too it has a graham cracker crust then it has the brownie mix and then they got the marshmallow uh, soft crispiness on top and then they drizzled it with chocolate so they did a good job and i think it's going to be a very sweet evening and we did taste the marshmallows the marshmallows in the box are much better than that package stuff that we got earlier <laughs> yep all right so we already threw ours back in the oven we're waiting for it to crisp up as soon as it's done we'll pull it out and we'll let you guys take a look all right so it's all finished we pulled it out it's a nice golden brown color it smells delicious i can't wait to dig into it but by the recipe it says to wait till it's completely cool right now it's very very hot so we're just going to go ahead we're going to let it cool we're going to pack up our car and get ready to head over to our party we're going to and there we'll cut into it so some of the video footage you're going to see is not our kitchen but that's okay uh, we'll shoot it anyways when we cut into it and we'll let you know what it tastes like all right we'll see you guys when we get there um happy holidays to everyone and uh wish us luck because i know this looks pretty tasty so we're pretty happy to taste it all right we'll see you guys soon Okay guys, I will be taste testing the food, so if you stay tuned for that guys, and make sure you keep watching this video. Oh yeah, Dad needs to put that. Don't forget to subscribe. subscribe. And guys, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you kick that freaking like button in the butt, and then make sure you slap the heck out of the a notification bell. And then guys, make sure you keep watching this sick content from Dan the Flavor Guy. Peace. All right, you ready? All right, guys, we're here at the holiday party. We're able to get it here. It's nice and cooled off. So we're going to go ahead and cut into it. And it's a little onion in there. It's okay. It's just a surface. Kind of see here, we've got the layers going on. So that looks really delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and take a bite and we're gonna see what we're at. It's really good, you guys. You can really taste the molasses in there and the pecans. The meringue is, is perfect. It's really good. I really recommend it. Um, definitely try it at your next holiday party. Thanks for watching.